So I'll start off with talking about just what sex-linked brown is in general. Um, and it's a mutation on Paternix quail, and almost every flock has it in some form. Um, the ones on the screen here are a pair of sex-linked brown, um, a rooster and a hen. Um, and it can be both hidden, so you can see it. In this case, you can see it on both the rooster and the hen. Um, and Or you can, um, it can be hidden in your flock so you see it um, as it's a recessive gene. It's purely visual, so it doesn't really affect um, egg production. It doesn't affect the meat production. Um, if you're breeding for genetics, it's something you want to breed out, obviously. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. So it's, um, like I said, if you're breeding for genetics, you want to breed it out mainly because it um, muddies up the colors and it makes it really hard to calculate what your hatches are going to be. Um, but if you're just breeding for fun, there's, you don't have to breed out sex link brown. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's so, ah, sorry. <laughs> um, but basically if this is the, a really big fundamental part of trying to, um, start with genetics, mainly because if you can get a clean feral line, it makes it a hundred times easier to predict your next couple hatches and your next generation. And you can breed your feral line to everything else. Um, and the reason it's so popular and in so many different flocks is because it's so hard to see and it can be really hard to identify and breed out. Um, and I'll get into that just a little bit later. So if you want to change to the next slide, um, I'm going to start with uh, talking about the different signs of it on some of the different base patterns. Um, so the first one is uh, Manchurian and fawn. Uh, this can be both Italian. All of the examples here are Italian. Um, and the biggest thing on your roosters for seeing it and spotting it is going to be a big red cap. So in the upper corner there, you see the rooster has clear signs of sex link brown. It's got an entirely red face. Um, you won't see a chin strap. You won't see the little uh, strap of white underneath its chest. And it's going to be brown. It They could have a red X on the back. That's pretty common too. Especially on roosters, though, it's really easy to identify. Um, and they're the bottom two and the one in the top corner, um, opposite corner, don't have it. They're, I've been test breeding them and I've been able to confirm that they don't have it. Um, but you can see how these are all roosters and they have that clear, definite chin strap where a lot of Italian roosters and Manchurian roosters are going to have that full red cap that shows that it's a male. That's actually a very clear sign that it's sex link brown. Um, and it's it makes identifying hens from roosters just a little bit harder. Um, but once you clean it out of your flock, it makes a really nice, clean bird. And um, so Manchurian, so this is for the roosters, and it's going to be a similar thing for the hens. It's one of the hardest Manchurians, so your Italians and your um, Manchurians are the hardest ones for me personally to tell. And the biggest way you're going to be able to see it is by their mask. Um, so you really want to be looking for a defined line across the side of the cheek. Um, and you're going to be looking for an absence of any rusty red, dark red coloring on the chest, especially. Um, if you want to switch to the next one. So this is an e, uh, extended brown. So this is going to be your pharaoh or your um, Tibetan and your Rosettas. Um, this is a good sign of a clean Tibetan. And um, I don't breed EB a whole lot, mainly because it's a lot harder to work with. Um, they're not feather sexable, so you can't see it right away. Um, and that, but if you go to the next slide, yep. uh, this is what it what it could look like. You'll see a ring around the neck, especially that's going to be a reddish color. Um, it'll be a lot lighter in color, and then there can be an X on the back um, that'll show a sign. It can show it if it's homozygous. Um, so next one. So then the biggest one to clean out um, is pharaohs. You can start by cleaning out your Italians and your IB, um, your EB, but re the one of the biggest things to really focus in on for sex link brown is your pharaohs because once you have pharaohs, it's a lot easier to clean up the rest of the lines. And it's pharaohs are the easiest um, color mutation to see it on. It's feather sexable, so you know right away what you're working with. And... Overall, in general, pharaohs are just going to be 
where you want to start when you're taking out sex link brown. Um, so this is a homozygous sex link brown rooster. So this is what you'll see um, sex link brown on. It's got to have two copies of it. So this is when it shows it. Um, you're going to see a nice, a lot of brown earlobes. Um, it, there's a little on the picture, there's a, um, it's an, a clean rooster that'll be completely like a salmon pink color. Um, the chest will be a dark rusty red. So a clean feral hen or clean feral rooster will be a lot lighter, more of a cream color. Um, and there will be very little color on the chest and the breast. Um, and then the redness on that neck, so you can see right around the front breast, it'll extend onto the back usually as well. Not always, um, but it's a pretty obvious sign when you see them side by side. And then the same with the Italians, there's no chin strap there. Um, there you'll see very little white around there, very little black, and most of the bird will be a brown color. Um, so if you go to the next slide. So this is, um, the pharaoh on the left is actually heterozygous, so it doesn't show any signs of sex link brown, uh, I'll, and I'll explain that a little bit later, um, but this is what a clean pharaoh will look like, and the one on the right is a homozygous sex link brown, so you're going to be able to see it, and it's subtle. It's not something that's going to stick out right away. You have to really be looking for it. Um, but you can see the rooster on the left it just has a lot cleaner look around it. It's got um, the rusty red stays mostly just in the very thin outline of the chest. Um, and then in the next picture, which I'll get to later, there's going to be um, no, there's going to be very little of the redness around the neck extending into the back. The chin strap that is much cleaner. Um, the earlobe is a lighter brown color. It's not that dark rusty. Um, and you can see how the face itself is just a lot lighter and it looks neater. Um, so you can move to the next slide. So this is just what you're looking for in a clean feral rooster. Um, you want the cheeks to be an even, cheek color. You don't want any muddiness. You don't want any orange in the face at all. Um, when you're looking at the mask and the side of the head, you want the chin, the um, lines across the beak to extend. You want them to be black um, or extremely dark brown. Um, they can have lighter brown around the neck, but it's not going to be prominent at all. It's not going to extend into the back. Um, the chin strap should be very clearly white. You should very easily be able to see a difference on where the chin strap is. Um, and then you're going to see and then the breast color. It's There's a really clear, crisp, defined line between where the breast color begins and where the side and under feathering is. Um, and then a note I, did, I do have underneath there, you pharaohs that look clean, roosters, um, can actually carry sex link brown. So the one in this picture is heterosex link brown. It just doesn't show it because it only has one copy of it. Um, so I'll go into that a little bit later, but the I'll go into the next slide. Um, so this is the back of the pharaoh. Uh, the one on the right is going to be your homozygous sex link brown. So it's going to have two copies and it'll show it. And the one on the left is the same rooster as before that looks clean. Um, and you can see how the brown color is really limited. It's a little bit more of a paler slate gray almost in the back um, compared to the one on the right. And that re the redness around the neck is really, really limited to around the neck. It doesn't extend into the back at all. Um, on homozygous roosters, you can sometimes see an X on the back. It'll go all the way across the back. Um, and it can sometimes, that redness can go into a deep V into the back. It'll just depend on the line itself. Um, but you really want a clean, uniform color on your pharaohs. Where a sex link brown is going to get you a lighter bird, slightly lighter. It's harder to see in the pictures. Um, but when you have them side by side and you can see them up close, it really does, it's, it really is easier to tell. Um, you can go on to the next one.
So this is just another side-by-side -side picture. Um, the one on the, the picture on the right is of that homozygous feral roost, homozygous sexling brown. And you can see how his, he just, the brown on his face and on the orangeness of his breast just really, really pops out at you. And you can see even from the side, just how much muddier his face is and less clean. Um, and then looking at the pictures on the left, you can see it just a little bit better here, how that the rusty collar comes down just a little bit more where the pharaoh on the bottom is just a lot, the color is a lot less brown. It's more of a grayish than a brown. Um, gray isn't probably the best color for it, but it's not a rusty red brown. It's more of a muted color. Um, and you can go to the next one. So this is a, an example of hens. Hen, I've gotten a lot of questions about hens. Hens are one of the hardest like things to tell out of all of them. Um, but basically the one on the left is going to be my hemozygous sexling brown and the one on the right should be a clean pharaoh. Um, and you can see how her neck has very, very little brown. It's limited just to right around her neck. It doesn't extend into the back at all. And one of the biggest things you're going to see on a hemozygous, so a, a hen that is going to show sexling brown, is she's going to have orange in her feathers, in her breast feathers. So a clean feral hen will not have any orange whatsoever in their breast feathers. Um, they should still have a clean, clear um, chin strap, just like the roosters. Breast feathering should be even, but that's more of a selective trait. Um, you're really going to be looking at the back feathers and the chest feathers almost exclusively on hens. Um, they'll form that V. They can form an X on the back, too, um, if there's a lot of sex link brown, if it's really obvious to see. Um, so that's one of the biggest ways to determine if you have a sex link brown hen or not. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, I'll get a little bit more into the genetics behind it. Um, so as you can see before, sex link brown can be found on any base form. It can be found on any sort of color ahead of time. Um, it can be found on your, your pharaohs, it can be found on Italians, Manchurians, Tibetans, Rosettas, any other form. Um, the only one it can't really cross with is Rue, and I can get into that a little bit later, which is still a little bit unknown. There's not a lot of sex link brown Rue crosses, but pretty much every other color mutation can have sex link brown. Um, so sex link brown is officially classified as sex link recessive, which it's not the only mutation to be recessive, um, but basically what that means, um, the recessive part of it means there's two copies of it and you need both copies of that mutation to show. So if you look onto the chart here, um, the only bird that's out of this whole square that's going to show what sex, that's going to show sex link brown would be the one with two copies of B on the bottom. Um, so it can be really hard to tell because it can be hidden. In roosters especially, um, you need to, it needs to be homozygous or in hen's terms, which I'll explain a little bit later, um, hemizygous to be able to show it. It can have one copy and hide it and you would never know you have it. So you, it takes more than one generation. It takes multiple generations of breeding out and slowly breeding and breeding and test breeding and checking every single generation to make sure that you don't have sex link brown to be able to see it. Um, to go to the next one. So to the other half of the um, of sex link for sex of the sex link, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated. Um, so quail normally have two alleles on a chromosome. Um, so most quail are going to have uh, most quail chromosomes are going to have on the left, how they have two normal sized chromosomes. And that's like the same for every other mutation. It's gonna be like your phi mutations, um, like your, well, I'm trying to think, like your sparkly. Any other mutation really is going to have a normal set of chromosomes. The only two that confirmed so far, um, there's a, that are in public hands and pretty commonly available are gonna be your sex link brown and your rue. Um, so it, However, this isn't the case. They don't have two chromosomes for hens on the sex chromosomes. Um, so hens have one and a half. So their W chromosome, um, which is the female chromosome, is, or the, um, 
is a little bit too small to be able to hold a mutation. Um, so you can have in your hens, um, if you have just one copy of the mutation, it's going to show. Hens cannot hide sex link brown is basically all it means. They either have it and they show it or they don't have it at all. Where roosters, they can have one copy and hide it. So in hens, basically all the sex link is, um, is that you're going to have a homos, it, I, it's called hemizygous, um, but what it means is the, they're going to act as if they have homozygous at all times. It's not recessive for hens. Um, so that's really the biggest takeaway behind um, sex link brown and the sex linked part of it specifically. Um, if you go on to the next slide. Uh, so this is crossing out a sex link brown times a hetero rooster. And it's basically going to show you that you need clean hens um, to start taking it out. So it's really important to be able to find um, and take to see and identify the sex link brown in hens because you need clean hens to take it out. Even if you have a hetero rooster or later in another slideshow, or not in another slide, I'll have a um, a chart of what it'll look like for a homozygous rooster. You will not be able to clean it out with just without having clean hens. So it's something you really need to start with. Um, and you can see here, uh, it'll it affects your hens and roosters differently. So you're going to be able getting a different percentage, but in any single case, your hen either has it or it doesn't. That's one of the biggest takeaways. And you need to have clean hens starting out. So if you move on to the next one. Um, so this is going back to what I said earlier, how it is you want to start with your pharaohs almost always. And this is why. So this is just a small example. It's not the only outcome. It's not the only crossing. But when you take Italian and you're crossing with Italian, um, it gets really, really, really complicated really fast. So on your third generation, um, I had to split it because it was too wide to fit on one screen. Um, but your third generation, you can have up to 12 outcomes with just a single hatching. And you're getting into really, really nitty gritty. So like 6.25% of your hatches. Um, so you're going to want, it's easiest to start with your pharaoh lines and always clean out your pharaoh lines first, uh, because then you can come back to your Italians. But when you're crossing Italians and Italians, you're, you're throwing into a whole nother different ball game where you've got, you have to keep track not only of how your sex link brown is following through, but also how your Italian and your Manchurian and your pharaoh lines are coming out clean too. Um, so you can, it is doable, but it's going to take a lot more work and a lot more effort to start with your Italians. Um, and even in this case scenario, your easiest bet would be to either cross Manchurians to your pharaohs, so you know what you're getting every single time, or you can just skip that step and do Manchurians to Manchurians um, if you want to stick with fawn, and then later start breeding for your Italians again, because it's, it makes it way more complicated than you need to be if you're doing the same with, with Italians. And it's the same with Rosettas. Um, this chart will look exactly identical for Rosettas. Um, instead of Italian, you'll put Rosetta. Instead of Manchurian, it'll be EB. And the percentages will work out the same. Um, but the same with all of your extended brown. Because they're not um, feather sexable, you're going to have a hard time distinguishing very quickly on which ones are male and female and on top of that you're going to bring into the genetics of i'm breeding um tibetan to a rosetta and i'm getting different hatch rates so you're putting another layer of complication onto something that's already hard enough to do from the beginning um so if you go to the next one so this is a ferro sex link brown chart so this has every single combination um uh, that you can co possibly create with Pharaoh and Sexling Brown, just those two mu mutations. Um, if you have a clean hen versus a, a homozygous rooster, which is what you'll probably most people will start out with, um, you're going to get 50 50. You're either you're going to have hemizygous hens that are going to show Sexling Brown, and you're going to get half 
um, heterozygous roosters, which don't show sex link brown. Uh, and then you're going to want to cross those roosters um, that don't show any signs of sex link brown right back to your hens. And you can do it by either bringing in more clean hens. Um, you can do it by breeding back to the mothers um, in quail, especially. Um, you don't have to worry about inbreeding nearly as much as long as you're keeping really good records and you know where your quail are coming from and you're tracking back any issues that can come back. It's really not an issue to breed mothers to sons or daughters to fathers. You really want to avoid sibling crosses if at all possible, um, but it is very easy to do to breed and you're not going to have issues for several generations breeding mothers to sons. Um, and then once you have your hetero rooster and your hens, uh, and you cross your hetero rooster to your clean hens, you're going to be getting 25% of them are going to show your sex link brown. And you're usually going to want to call those. Um, call doesn't, it's worth noting, call doesn't necessarily mean kill in this case. It could be meaning you're switching it to a different breeding pen. You're not going to use it for fair lines. It could be, um, you're going to use it for eating eggs. You usually don't want to breed them. Um, and from a clean hen and a hetero rooster, you're going to get about 25% of your hatch that'll be clean hens. So they won't show any sign of sex link brown. And you can use that for breeding projects if you're going to a different color mutation. Um, you can use that for kind of whatever. Um, and you can breed those back if you'd like to get original hens. There's a lot you can do once you have confirmed clean hens. Um, but once you have... You're, you're, once you're on your third generation is where it gets the hardest um, because you're going to have to individually test those roosters against clean hens and seeing what you're getting. Um, because roosters can hide it, you need to constantly be checking against a clean hen to make sure that none of the offspring have any signs of sex link brown. Um, a clean rooster and a clean hen with zero sex link brown, hidden or otherwise, will get 100% clean offspring. When you're doing a hetero rooster, so it's hiding sex link brown and a clean hen, um, you're gonna get about half of your hens will still show signs of sex link brown. So if there is, if at any point in your breeding system, if you believe you have a clean hen and a clean rooster, but you're getting sex link brown in your offspring, chances are your rooster is hiding sex link brown. And if you go to the last slide, um, this is just a chart of, in my opinion, what the easiest way is to breed out sex link brown. So starting with an F, a female that is completely clean and doesn't show signs of sex link brown, and then um, pairing it with a male that does show signs of sex link brown, and you can work your way down the chart. Um, but basically, you want to be breeding um, all the way down to F3, and then you're going to be individually test breeding um, your clean what look like clean roosters, just to weed out which ones are heterosex link brown and which ones are actually completely clean. And once you get to F4, really all you're going to be doing is spot checking to make sure that you didn't accidentally miss a heterozygous rooster or if you've got um, a female that's actually hiding some sex link brown. Um, but you can even after F4, F5, generation 5, 6, 7, keep, it keeps going on. You're going to have to constantly be checking just to make sure you didn't miss anything. This is theoretically what should happen. Um, but until you see it for sure and until you can confirm it, there is no definite way to make sure you didn't miss anything just besides breeding constantly and double checking everything that you're doing.